Hi, I'm Cora Keen, and um, this is our learning series, and we, we are um, doing a project called 30 Days of Deptive Action, 30 Days in the Garden, and um, there's three things that we're doing for adaptive action, three questions, and um, would you like to say them? Sure. They are, so what, so what, and now what? <laughs> and this is... I'm Matt. This is... And I'm Kiara. <laughs> and I'm Cora. <laughs> and uh, this is, uh, you yeah, know, we're using adaptive action as sort of our, our, right, our method girls, our way of engaging with this question. What is a garden? What this whole series is about. What is a garden? We're on day something like day 20 or day 21 something today. Something like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, somewhere in there. So we're using adaptive action, these three questions. Thank you very much for that introduction, Cora. And also, I think we should introduce uh, two more um, guests to, oh, yeah. to our uh, lesson this morning. This is Pinky and this is Praxis. <laughs> mm-hmm, yep. And, and let's, audience. Uh, we're going to dedicate uh, this little episode to our friends of the Silwood Group. I just uh, got a very beautiful note from our friend Claudia um, in Australia, and uh, we'll, we'll connect uh, people in Silwood to this particular, um, this particular uh, lesson. So to each day we've been starting out with a different topic. Today our topic is patterns, okay? You might think it was flamingos. Maybe it is flamingos. I'm gonna leave that open to uh, these girls to think about. But we're gonna start out with the what of patterns. Now we did walk around the garden. We're in our garden here. Um, you have some water, and um, you know we're in our in our garden here in eastern North Carolina. It looks a little bare back there, but that's our neighbor's fence, not ours. You know, an island in eastern North Carolina, and girls. Um, what patterns have you noticed uh, so far today? Um, I have noticed, um, well, I've written a few things down here in my notebook. While she looks that up, they had their little uh, journals and they took some notes, wrote some questions, wrote down observations, drew some pictures. So, um, in the fence, the patterns of the fence around the garden, the ripples in the pond, the ripples in the pond that the fountain's making, the veins in the leaves. The veins in the leaves. Hmm. Mm. Okay. Kiara, um, what patterns um, would you like to bring our attention to today? Well, I noticed the patterns of um, the flower petals on the flower. So it's like the flowers here, and then the petals go around and around and around. There's a lot in the outside, and then they get less and less and less until it gets to the middle. And I think it's really pretty. <laughs> Let me just follow up with that. So what is a, a, with thinking about that flower and the way you described those whirls of the petals, so what is, uh, or just what are some thoughts of yours of like, thinking about that, what is a pattern? Or what's a characteristic or a feature of a pattern? Um, well, a pattern is mostly, it's just um, like about similarities differences and repetition. There's a lot of things that are, um, so for example, like we have stepping stones in our garden, and so it's one stepping stone, two, three, four, and they all look the same, so that's the same pattern, repeating, repeating, repeating. Well, that's that. Okay, thank you. <laughs> that's Hmm, I'm going to have to look up the definition of a pattern, but I think uh, you probably gave a better one than whatever I'll find. Cora, I want to ask you, um, you mentioned the veins in the leaf. Now, I'm going to ask a tough question here, especially while these saws are going in the background. So, please speak up um, 
as as loud as you're able. Cora, so so what causes that's sort of what I'm wondering. So what causes a pattern? So actually let's go for the um pond, the ripples in the pond. So what caused those ripples in the pond? Um <coughs> The um the fountains spurting the water out of the fountain and splashing down on the other water and making it move. The water moved. Is it like waves, like like the ocean waves, it ripples. So what is the connection, if if you could, Coral, I'll stick with you here. So what is the connection between that fountain, it shooting the water up? And the the ripples in in the water. Well, they're, they're water hitting. They're both water <coughs> hitting each other. I'm sorry. I meant to say. So, what is a connection between the machine, the fountain, the machine that's shooting the water, and the ripples in the water, in the pond? They're both. Um, Maybe pumping the water? Maybe? They're both moving the water. Yeah, moving. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How about you, Kiara? Um, so what... Cora mentioned the leaf. Mm -hmm. Maybe if we're thinking evolutionarily over a long time scale. So what causes this pattern? I mean, we look at this pattern here. Um, in the, the veins of the leaf. So what causes the pattern in that leaf of the veins? Um, would you would you think? Well, it's these leaves they're made and it's so like the um, like nutrition and like sunlight and water can get through the plants. Like all those veins, the water and like nutrition goes through it and distributes into the leaf. I think. Hmm. Gosh, it makes me want to ask. Uh, is there anything that you'd predict about what's going to happen? You know, you have a different pattern on different leaves. Um, what would you predict is, or, you know, happens because of these differences? Um, well, they are all designed because they're different types of plants, and some of them need, like, different types of nutrition, need different some amounts of sunlight, so some, like, bigger to capture more sunlight, and smaller to capture less maybe thanks for that core did you have any thoughts about that like what causes the pattern in the leaf that you were looking at um not really mm -hmm. well i want to move on maybe to our third question here um because it is getting a little loud with this uh this saw and we're going to do, I think, a few of these lessons just with patterns being the subject. But I wanted to ask you, Cora, if you were going to create a piece of art, an artwork now, um, now what pattern would inspire you? Well, a spider web. I was going to say that if he asked me that question. <laughs> or waves, waves on, in the ocean. Huh. So, so what about the spider web inspires you? Well, um, cause it's just the repeating pattern and it's so small and delicate and beautiful. And then when like water droplets and yeah, like droplets of water get on the spider web, they're just shining there and it looks like it's suspended in air and it's so pretty. Mm, mm. Now our last uh, question to our um, topic question of this project, what is a garden? Cora, given this conversation, now what do we know about a garden? Or now what is a garden to you? It has a bunch of patterns. Bunch of patterns? <laughs> yep. Well. 
Bam! Done. <laughs> How about you? Yeah. What do you think? A garden is full of patterns, big, small, ones that we can see, ones that we can hear, like the cicadas going on and off, on and off. And the and saws going on and off, on and off. Oh, sorry. That's not part of the garden, mister. Um, um, and they say he's teaching us. Um, uh, yeah, so hearing the cicadas going on and off, looking at the same pattern on the leaves, and, like, you can feel, like, bump, like, the bumpy soil, bump, bump, and, yeah. <laughs> I love that, uh, no, what is a garden? It's, like, acoustic patterns, visual patterns that are visual we perceive the patterns also through texture on the leaves and we can taste sort of <laughs> like maybe that's the subject of our next conversation <laughs> patterns of taste i'm matt keen thank you for visiting creating a future we want the, our learning series <laughs> tell